What's going on today, guys? Del Sol is back on the stands. It's like deja vu. No. Now it's like deja vu. So, I'm having a problem out of the throwout bearing again. Uh, this problem is a little bit different. <laughs> uh, in that the throwout bearing is in there this time, if you've seen my last video. So the engine break in is going good. Uh, I got about 1200 miles on it, I think. And everything seems to be working good. The transmission's all good. Um, just everything's working. So, except for the clutch. So most people know that I put in a spec three clutch. I waited weeks to get that thing. They shipped it all across the United States. And it's not breaking in. Now, I think I figured out the problem. Uh, that, that clutch came with a pressure plate and a throwout bearing. Now, the throwout bearing it came with is like my tilting one. It is a little bit taller. And I think the reason why it's taller is because their flywheel is designed a little bit different. So if this is the engine block where it connects to the transmission, you have the crank and then the flywheel, you have this clutch face right here. Then you have the pressure plate and the throttle bearing. Well, the distance between the end of the motor and the surface to the clutch is pretty small. It's smaller than stock. So they adjusted that by making the throwout bearing a little bit thicker. The ASCO flywheel, like I have, is in the stock location. So it's a little bit thicker. The uh, clutch face is offset off the block a little bit farther. And the reason why Honda did this from the factory is because this was originally a dual mass flywheel. So it was a little bit thicker, it had all the springs and stuff built in it, but they used a thinner throwout bearing. The problem I have is that I got the thick throwout bearing with this setup. So it's actually holding that pressure plate open a little bit. So it's not clamping down on the clutch. And typical fashion, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen to me. So it's what it always feels like. Uh, this is not the first time this, this kind of situation's happened. Um, it actually happened with uh, an oil pump and pickup and oil pan. Uh, there's actually, uh, most of you guys know that I run the J35A4s, but there's actually two different kinds of J35A4s. Uh, most Honda guys will know that if it has that engine code, everything's swappable, you know, as long as you stay on that code. So if it's, you know, a B18C1, all B18C1s are pretty much the same. Unless you have like US and, and JDM, you know, they'll be slightly different. But these are US made. And the J35A4, there's two different variants. Now, I don't know if it's because they made them in two different locations or what, but one of them has a deep pan and one of them has a short pan. And depending on which one you have, you will build oil pressure or you won't if you swap the pans. So the one that I had was a deep pan and the one that I blew up was a short pan. Well, whenever I blew it up and I was swapping that new motor into here, uh, the pan, I took off and I put my tapped pan back on it. And this car actually never even left the jack stands. I never even got the wheels and everything hooked back up. I started it, ran for like three minutes, blew up. <laughs> I don't actually know if I've ever shared this story, but it happened last year around Christmas. I think like Christmas weekend, I literally dropped that motor in and New Year's, I was dropping another motor in. Um, anyways, what happened was, uh, one of the J35A4s is the same as a J32A2. Most people assume that the pans are the same. As a matter of fact, every thread I've ever seen says that they're the same, but they're not. And the reason why I know that for a fact is because whenever I went to put my alternator bracket on, it has a guard plate for the oil pan. 
and it did not fit the engine that I put in here. So that kind of reinforced the decision to swap pans with the one that I already had tapped anyways. And I just cleaned it out real good, got every shaving out of it, stuck it on there, started the motor, and in three minutes it was blown up. <laughs> I actually wasn't inside the car looking for oil pressure, so I didn't even know. It was kind of a stupid mistake. But I had seen the engine run before it came out of a running car, so I instantly figured, hey, it has oil pressure. I don't, I don't need to check that. I need to be looking at everything else. So, uh, assumption is the mother of all failures. Anyways, what well, we ended up finding out that, you know, whenever you swap pans from one V6 to another, literally just, if you pull the pan off of one and you're gonna swap it to another, take the pickup with it, all problems are solved. There's two different pickups. And what happened was the shorter pan actually smashed that pickup, starved it of oil, and uh, blew it up. So, like I said, you know, if it's gonna happen, <laughs> it's gonna happen to me. I'm gonna find out about it. A uh, little update on the Tuner Studio video. I have been working on it. This is my tuning laptop. It's pretty underpowered for doing any kind of video stuff, but I did find out with HPs, now, I don't know if it's a Windows 10 HP or, or what, but if you hold Windows, oop, oop, Windows Alt R, it'll pop up a little window, maybe. It's gonna make me into a liar. Oh, no, oh, there it is. It records your screen. Now, it won't do it on the desktop. I haven't figured out how to make it do that yet, but it will record Tuner Studio. Now, in this case, that's that's pretty nice. Um, uh, but as like a, um, for data logging and stuff, it's not really needed because if you open up a data log like I have here and let's just go to an RPM one, back it up. You can actually replay your data logs like you were driving. So. This is pretty nice. Don't worry about that. That's just me letting off the gas. So, yeah, I'm working on it. Um, I'm just trying to do one project at a time. This one I wasn't really expecting. I kind of expected to just keep driving it and be able to work the clutch out. I thought that the clutch material was just different than what I'm used to. And with a higher rated, uh, uh, torque load that this clutch will handle. I was like, man, this this clutch sucks breaking in. It's not like any other clutch. Turns out that <laughs> it's probably the throw out bearing being wrong. Um, but I got that to do this weekend, the video to do, and then I have the hatch motor uh, being worked on. The uh, I had both of the heads dipped and the engine dipped and cleaned and then the crank is off being balanced right now i have the rods and pistons are assembled and then i have the gears for the transmission came in very nice very nice uh these still run the synchros which i'm kind of caught i really didn't want to have to run the synchros but I thought that this is all they had available. And I later found out that, I'm pretty sure that they call it dog tooth, but, or dog engagement. They do have those available. I haven't been able to find them yet, but I have some leads. Um, the people that did have them, I tried to call them. I never could get a hold of anybody. So if you know someone, drop them in the comments. And then I got the uh, six gear cuff. And I don't know if this car is eventually even going to need the fifth gear cuff. Uh, with the crank being balanced, I won't be afraid to push this engine very hard. And, I mean, this is strictly a quarter-mile car. This is not a uh, going to be a street-driven car. But I think that's enough of the updates and what's going on. And just stay tuned. I'll probably do another video whenever I get this thing back together. I'm hoping to have it back together tomorrow, but depending on the clutch, 
And then uh, just don't forget, like and subscribe. There'll be uh, more content to come. And thanks for tuning in. See you all later.